Hi. The next rule we're going to discuss is called inverse function rule. And it relates, of course, to the inverse function that we were discussing in our initial classes. So, uh, we let's first start maybe by repeating a little bit what is an inverse function and, uh, and then we can move on to the differentiation rules for the uh, rule for this function. Okay, so given the function y equals f of x, we get that x equals to f to the power negative 1 of y is what we're going to call inverse function. Okay, so look, even by looking at this, we see what we need to do. Look, f is going to be a sum formula here, right? If we solve this equation for x, we're going to express x in terms of y, and now we will have a new function where x is a function of y. But this uh, is not always possible, right? Uh, so sometimes we cannot find uniquely defined x, and this is a big problem. Why? Look, for example, even with a quadratic function, there will we will always have two solutions. And uh, it's not enough for us to be able to find, or find x, but this x must still confirm to the definition of the function. And we'll look, what was the definition of the function telling us? The definition of the function is telling us that for every x, we must have uniquely defined value y. Which of course means that for two x's we can have the same value y but what we cannot have is for example to have two possible y values uh, for one x. And look, with some quadratic function we could obtain a result like this. Right? And in these cases we see that for given x we have different values of y, this is no longer a function. So before we actually proceed with solving this function for x, we need to make sure that as a result uh, we're not going to get uh, an expression that is not a function. So we the condition that will actually allow us to do it is that f of x must be strictly monotonic. Okay, what do I mean by strictly monotonic? Okay, now let's use what we learned in the, uh, in logics, and let's use this symbol. What does it mean for every, right? So, for every, so we've got if for every x1 lower than x2, we have f of x1 is lower than f of x2. What does this mean? Look, it means that as x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, value of the function is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We call this, uh, uh, we call the function that possesses this property, uh, uh, we call this function that possesses this property uh, strictly increasing. Right? So this would be a function, for example, a linear function, that always with higher x we have associated higher y. But this function doesn't need to be 
uh, it doesn't need to be a straight line even if it moves like that but it never falls so it just drops in the rate at which it increases we are still having strictly increasing function okay then we can also write that uh, if for every x1 lower than x2 f of x1 is bigger than f of x2 we call this type of function strictly decreasing now uh, now look if what, what how would this type of function look? look again we could start with we could start with downward sloping linear function the bigger the x the lower the y or again it could be some wavy shape as long as it's always decreasing just at a varying rate okay so knowing this we can define what means strictly monotonic a function uh, that is strictly monotonic is a function that is either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing now if this condition is met so if x is f of x is either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing we can always find an inverse function okay now let's go maybe to an example okay let's just say that y is equal to 5x uh, plus 25 okay look this is a linear function it has a positive coefficient so we we know that it's going to be strictly increasing and by consequence it's going to be strictly monotonic uh, yeah so now let's let's draw this function I, I'm hoping I'm gonna do it properly because now a lot depends on it okay now first we see that if y is equal to if x is equal to 0 y is equal to 25 and uh, we see also that if y is equal to 0 then x is equal to negative 5 right so it's gonna go somewhere here okay right. I hope you remember this if this is 0 here we get negative 5 x when we divide by negative 5 x we get negative 5 okay and look if I'm gonna okay I need to do it a little better because I want the graph to actually for, with the graph to actually see the, how the inverse function works okay so look, this is our function now if I want to find inverse function for this case then what do I need to do? Well, I need to solve this for x. Okay, how, uh, uh, how am I going to go about it? Well, first, maybe let's move this to the other hand side of the equation. So we've got that 5x is equal to y minus 25. Okay, now we see that if I'm going to solve this, if I want to solve this, I need to divide both sides by x. And I'm getting that x 
is equal to 1 over 5y minus 5. Okay, now, what do I need to do next? Look, if I actually would like to put this function, this is already an inverse function, right? Because if this, if this is y equals f of x, right? Then this function over here is x equals to the power negative 1 of y. Okay, look, I'm going to put it on the graph. So uh, before I'm going to do it, I'm going to do a very simple trick. So everything makes sense to me. Over here, I'm going to put y. And over here, I'm going to put x. Because look, when we are dealing with some function, here we have arguments, and we like to have arguments on the horizontal axis, and here we have values, so we like to have values on the vertical axis. Uh, it, okay. So, what do we get in this, uh, uh, in this context? Look, remember, now, like, why, uh, 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 okay, y is over here, x is over here. So, first, if y is 0, x is negative 5. Okay, so, here is our new x-axis, so we will have negative 5 somewhere over here. And now, if x is 0, okay, let, let, let's solve this so we can see it. It's 1 over 5, y equals negative 5. And look, again, if I move this to the other hand side, I'm getting that y is equal to 25. So let me put this uh, more or less 25 over here. Now, I'm going to draw this function. Hopefully, I'm not going to mess it up too much. Okay. Okay, I know this is not perfect, but of course we are imagining that this is a straight line. And let's notice a very simple thing. There is a relationship between the two, which we should see right away. Look, here is negative 5, here is negative 5. Here is 25, here is 25. So, those two are some sort of mirror reflections, but with respect to what? Well, with respect to 45 degrees line, going through the origin. So this is the line where y equals x, right? Or from our different perspective, x equals y. In this case, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so now we've established, established relationship uh, between these two functions. We see that they are mirror reflections with respect to this line. Okay, but as you might say, of course this is always very very easy uh, in case uh, of linear function. Let's try something different. Let's try function y equals x squared. Huh, look, if we've got y equals x squared, situation becomes problematic right away. Why? Because this function is definitely not strictly monotonic, right? If I have y equals x squared, then I know the graph of it is a parabola, and it's going to look like this. So, we see that over here, it is, uh, uh, it is decreasing, over here, it is increasing, and look, if I would get a mirror reflection of this function with respect to 45 degrees line, and maybe I should do it, but give me a second, I should do it a little steeper, and it look better. Look, what would happen? 
Okay, this part, let's start with this. This part should go, should be reflected over, uh, uh, over here. So we should have mirror reflection and it would look like this. Okay, uh, which doesn't look, look, look that bad, right? But what about the other part? Okay, look, now I would have to draw a function that looks like this. You see? Because this is a mirror reflection, so all those distances, like this distance and this distance, should be equal. So we see what is happening. Now, this is no longer a function. Why this is no longer a function? Because look, if I'm going to take a line and I'm going to draw over here, what do I see? That for x0, we have two possible values of y. Over here, we've got some, let's call it y1, and over here, we've got some y2. So this is no longer a function. And of course, if we want to find inverse function, we need to make sure that it is a function. So, what can we do? Well, the trick to it here is fairly, fairly easy. We need to just restrict access to be bigger or equal to zero. Look, which means that now, if I'm going to draw this, this function is going to start at this point and going to go like that. Here we've got x, here we've got y. Okay, so now let's move on. This, of course, is our y equals f of x. Now, Let's find uh, x equals f to the power negative 1 of y. So, again, this is not very complicated because we restricted x's to positive values. So, look, what I can do in this case is simply take both sides of this equation to the power 1 over 2. So, I'm taking a square root out of both sides, right? So, I'm getting that, that, that x. Here, those are multiplying, we've got x to the power of 1, equals y to the power 1 over 2, or simply y square root of y. Okay, so now, if I want to draw this, I'm going to use the same trick as before. So, I'm going to put y over here. And I'm going to put x over here, right? So, how does this function look like? Well, this function looks like that, which, of course, shouldn't be surprising because, as you can see, this is what we got over here simply by using our mirror. And our mirror is the 45 degrees line, so x equals y, or y equals x. In this case, normally we write y equals x, in this case we are permitted to do any, uh, 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 do it any, uh, uh, any way we want. Okay, so now we know basically uh, how does it work. So here is our function y, equals f of x and here is a function x equals f to the power negative 1 of y the same as over here okay we will go back to we will get to one more case we will get to one more case uh, a, a, with a, associated with inverse functional I just want to tell you one thing before, because there is one thing interesting over here. Look, if I restrict values of x to the uh, to be uh, a, a bigger than zero, 
Then look, this function has two common points. One is at zero, because we know, of course, that x zero to the power of two is zero. Why? To the, uh, and and uh, square root of zero is zero. And then we've got again point like this at one. Why? Because we know that x uh, to the power one to the power of two is one, and square root out of one is one, right? But the interesting you're going to learn in the next uh, in the next couple of classes that we can actually find out that those two functions are dividing this area into three parts, right? This part, this part, and uh, this part. And look, the size of this area you see over here is 1 over 3, and it's equal to the size of this area, I'm sorry, which is also equal to 1 over 3, which means that it is equal to the size of this area, which is equal to 1 over 3. We're going to prove it a little bit later using integrals, but for now, let's go back to inverse function, and now let's derive inverse function rule. And look, we're going to do it again using a Leibniz notation of derivatives, uh, because it makes everything way, way easier. Okay, look, we said that before, that derivative dy dx can be interpreted as a ratio of two differentials, dy to dx. And this is something we're going to uh, take advantage of this time as well. Look. So what we're going to do over here, look, again, I'm going to start with the same thing I've been telling you all over. So that dy dx is equal to dy dx. And of course, this must be true because we have the same thing on both sides of the equation. And now look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both sides of the equation to the power negative 1. Let's remind ourselves, just to be sure, what does it mean? Look, if you have 2 to the power negative 1, well, this is easy. This is just 1 over 2, right? How did we do it? We took 1, we divided it by the number we have over here. Right? Then, what about if we have 1 over 2 to the power negative 1? How much is that? Well, let's use the same trick we used previously. Then it's going to be 1 divided by 1 over 2. But this is the same as 1 multiplied, when we divide, we multiply by the reciprocal, 2 over 1, which is 2. Okay, makes perfect sense. Okay, so how about if we have expression like 3 over 4 to the power negative 1? Okay, let's, let's use the same rule. Look, we can write it in two different forms. How? Look, first, I can simply take this as 1 over 3 over 4. Right? Right. Now, there is a second possibility. Okay, let's call this possibility the green possibility. And let's move on to what we can do next. Look, then I can just get 1, multiply it by reciprocal. So 4 over 3, and I'm going to get 4 over 3. And let's call this blue possibility. Okay, so look, from what we have established over here is that when I can when I take a number to a negative power, I can use either blue possibility or green possibility because they are the same. And look, this is exactly
exactly what I'm gonna do over here. On the left hand side, I wanna have the blue possibility. And on the right hand side, I wanna have green possible. What does it, it what, what is this giving? Look, if I'm gonna have a blue possibility, what do I need to do? I need to reverse denominator, put in numerator, numerator, and denominator. So I get different derivative. Derivative dx, d, y. Now, but on the right hand side, I'm gonna use a green possibility. So I'm gonna do it as one divided by dy, dx. And this, what you see over here is the inverse function rule. Not very complicated to get it, once we know how to use negative one half. Okay, and look, knowing the inverse function rule, as long as the inver inverse function exists, we can calculate uh, we can calculate uh, the derivative of the inverse function. Of course, look, sometimes it is uh, uh, sometimes we need to restrict the domain like we did with the uh, quadratic function. But this is uh, this is why we're let, let's just say we're gonna use uh, uh, we're gonna use an example with the uh, linear function. Okay, so look, let's just say that we've got a function y equals three x plus two. Now look, and I can calculate easily dy dx, right? It's just three, like nothing problematic for you. But look, what if I don't want to have derivative dy dx? What if I want to have derivative dx dy? Look, there are two possibilities of going about it. First thing I could do, which is way easier, is to use inverse function rule. Because by inverse function rule, I know that this is one over dy dx 1 over 3 and, and it is done of course there is, a, there is a longer possibility we can solve this for x so we're going to get that 3x is equal to y minus 2 so x equals 1 over 3 y minus 2 over 3 and then we get for this function, the dy dx is equal to 1 over 3, which of course is the same result. Okay, now I hope you can see that using this rule is easier. So every time we can actually find inverse function, so the condition of strict monoticity is that monotonicity, I'm sorry, monotonicity, very, uh, a very hard word, uh, is fulfilled, we can use this rule because it's gonna make our life easy. Okay, now when we know the inverse function rule, let's remind ourselves one additional inverse function that we've been using. Okay, we said that a function an e to the power of x has an inverse function. Look, how does y equals e to the power of x looks like? Well, we said, uh, we, we've established it a long time ago that this function 
look like this. Now, is this function monotonic? Of course. Look, it's getting here. If we would go to negative infinity here, it would be getting smaller and smaller and getting closer and closer to zero, right? So it has a limit at zero in negative infinity, in other words. But look, if we go like this, we see that it's always increasing and it never stops. So we can find uh, x out of this function using uh, 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 we can uh, we can solve this for x and we should obtain an inverse function. How do we do it? Well, we use the properties of logarithm, logarithms and I calculate natural logarithm of both sides. So I get that this is ln y times and I'm sorry, equals e equals natural logarithm of e to the power of x. But knowing the properties of logarithms, I can take this x up front and I know that ln e answers me a question to which power I should take e to get e so this is equal to 1 so in other words we get that x equals ln y is an inverse function for y equals e to the power of x. So look, now let me just replace x by y and y by x and look, again we see that those two functions are inverses of one another. Look, I hope you remember that ln x, y equals ln x looks like, I'm oh, sorry for that, like this. Yeah, they are definitely mirror reflections with respect to y equals x, so 45 degrees line. Okay, now let me just remind you one more thing, that of course we could do the same thing starting from y equals ln x. Now, the case here is a little bit more complicated because instead of logarithmizing both, both sides, we need to take anti-log, which means we are getting e to the power of y equals e to the power of ln x. But look, what do we have over here? Logarithm is telling, answering, answering me a question here. To which power I need to take e in order to get x? I'm taking e to this power. So this is x. And we get that this is x equals e to the power of y. Or again, if I change the names, y equals to power e to the power of x. Okay, so after this example, I hope you can guess what we're gonna do next. And of course, what we're gonna do next is logarithmic rule and exponential rule. And actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna establish logarithmic rule first, we're gonna prove it, and then using the property that those two functions are inverse functions uh, of one another. We're going to use inverse function rule to obtain exponential rule. Okay, thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.